Hi guys, and welcome back to the Carla Garrick Show. Today is episode 14, uh, and I'm delighted to be beaming back into your homes. Today we'll be talking about, as we always do, sort of the, the, the role of government, uh, how life should be, what the art of independence is, and how you can live free and thrive. So to all my thrivers out there, this one's for you. Thrivers are people who are curious about stuff. So you may be curious about where the term tinfoil hat comes from. I will be talking about that a little bit today. I will also be sharing with you a poll that was recently taken about the activities up there in Canada with our uh, neighbor up to the north who uh, the prime minister is doing some some really not great things to the freedom truckers and the freedom convoy. Uh, so we'll talk about some shocking results from the Democrats in America on that poll. And then I will be talking a little bit about, uh, I don't know, heat rays, ray weapons, uh, the voice of God, which apparently is a weapon, and a little bit more of that. And then we'll be wrapping up with a documentary I re recently watched, which I would like to recommend that people take a look at, called Downfall, The Case Against Boeing. First, I wanted to let you know what's been up in the free state of New Hampshire over the past week. Uh, the Free State Projects newsletter dropped uh, yesterday, so you could certainly take a look there. But some highlights that still stand out for me is uh, Governor Chris Sununu recently sat down with the the uh, founder of the Free State Project, Jason Sorens, and Will Ruger, who is a fellow over at the Cato Institute. They were the two authors of the uh, Freest 50 States or 50 States uh, Freedom Ranking. And of course, as you've probably heard by now, New Hampshire ranks number one, beating Florida and Texas. Don't tell them, everyone move to Florida, go ahead, why don't you? What we want up here in the great free state, uh, the great granite state, is we want more people who uh, understand the principles of personal responsibility and freedom and people who like property rights. Um, so that's where we're at. I, of course, forgot to start my clock, so we know how this show is gonna go. So, tinfoil hats, hmm. It actually occurred to me the other day when I started learning about these weapons that I'll be talking about in a little bit. I was like, man, I've always wanted to call my production company Tinfoil Hat Productions, and maybe I will. There are probably a hundred of those already. I'm not going to claim that it's an original idea. But it occurred to me when I was thinking about it, I was like, where does the name tinfoil hat even come from, right? So tinfoil hat is a disparaging term that is used by um, people to say that conspiracy theorists uh, are tinfoil hat wearers, and it's supposed to make you think that all ideas that are posited by people who are conspiracy theorists um, is uh, ludicrous, right? Like that they're just crazy and that their ideas are stupid. Of course, a flip side to that would be to simply think that a conspiracy theorist is someone who's curious about stuff. Cause that's what I am. I am, uh, I've just always been a deeply questioning person who has thought critically about things. And uh, so far in my life, I'm batting pretty accurately for people who've been following along since the start of the past two years with sort of all the COVID mania and COVID dissonance we've been seeing, uh, know that I was a very early proponent of the lab leak theory. Turns out, looks like I was right. Gain of function, looks like I was right. Now, of course, you might not be hearing this on the nightly news, but that doesn't mean that it's not true. I'm also willing to bet that uh, you didn't hear about this poll on the nightly news. So tinfoil hat, basically a disparaging term. I will explain in a little bit that tinfoil obviously is aluminum foil. Tinfoil is what we called it back in South Africa. That's sort of the typical name that you'll find in the Commonwealth. 
uh, but here in the States you guys call it tin foil I think as well but also aluminum foil or maybe aluminum foil I think that's one of those weird weird American words that can kind of go both ways so this poll that came out, uh, it was done, I believe, yesterday, and basically the good news we'll start with is that over half of American voters disapprove of Trudeau's actions. That is kind of reassuring because, you know, it doesn't feel like everyone is really uh, very much on board a kind of freedom train anymore. It seems like we're being conditioned towards this sort of notion of totalitarianism and top-down control, um, including, so over half of American voters disapprove of Trudeau's actions, including about three quarters of independent voters, go independent people, and almost nine out of 10 Republicans. However, most Democrats approve of Trudeau's response to the protest. Now, if you've been under a rock or if you're part of the 10% of people who are unaware of the situation in Canada, in a nutshell, basically what happened is Canada has had mandates. They've had mandatory vaccine mandates. They were locked down. It was really bad. Uh, there was a lot of restriction of freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, freedom of association. And so at some stage, a bunch of Canadians were like, you know what? That's enough. And so they went to Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada, and, uh, and it was these truckers and these freedom convoys, and then a lot of people actually gave support. Over $9 million was raised on GoFundMe, and, um, or I think it was a different platform, but $9 million was raised, and uh, Trudeau, the, uh, the dictator of Canada, seize the money, which should tell you that no one should want digital money and government to control that. Um, but here's the shocking part. Here's what was shocking to me. 65%. So basically Trudeau did everything out of an authoritarian uh, book. So if you were to be like, what are the top 10 steps of authoritarianism? Things like ending free speech, ending the right of assembly, ending the right to criticize your government, uh, suspending the actual constitution of Canada, their charter, uh, taking people's funds, uh, telling banks to seize funds, threatening people's children, telling them they were going to shoot and put down their animals, their pets, their dogs. All of these things happen and are verifiable. 65% of American Democrats approve of these actions. Now, if that isn't telling to you that we have a serious problem in this country with critical thinking, because I don't care what party you're in, you should not find these kinds of things acceptable. Now, I will tell you more so what you should not find acceptable is the militarization of global police forces Something I personally have been working on since I moved to New Hampshire more than a dozen years ago. Uh, by way of background, just a short little history lesson. Back in 2013, here in the great state of New Hampshire, the then police chief, Chief Duvall of Concord Police, wrote a grant application for a Bearcat. A Bearcat is a ballistic engineered armored uh, response attack truck, I think is the, the, the acronym for it. Uh, uh, um. And yeah, here we go. Ballistic Engineered Armored Response Counter Attack Vehicle. Okay, so back in 2013, in a grant application from a local police department to the Department of Homeland Security, which is a, I mean, you know, what can we even say? Department of Homeland Security should never have been started. It was, here we are. We warned, we being libertarians, warned everyone this was a bad idea. The more you militarize things, the more you create opportunities for bad guys to start to use these things against uh, innocent people or protesters or just simply people you do not like. So back in the day, 
Uh, this was actually back right after the past, uh, you know, so we had an economic crisis in 2008. This is 2013. For some reason, Chief Duvall says, hey, I need this $250,000 truck. Don't worry, it's free because we're getting it from the federal government because, you know, the federal government can just print money. And so everything is free. We're going to be in a state in America soon where everything is free except you. So in this grant application, he says, the police chief of Concord says, he needs this ballistic engineered account. Uh, this is an actual, I mean, it's the equivalent of a tank. It actually has a turret. It has a ramrod ram that can actually be pushed through a window. And if you get the, the, the high-end version, it actually can pump tear gas after puncturing a wall. So this is what the police chief of Concord, a city that had had two homicides in a decade, said he needed to prevent daily activities by free staters, occupy, uh, occupy New Hampshire at the time, and I believe sovereign citizens. So he said it was a, a domestic terrorist threat that's now me, guys. I mean, you know me at this stage. And anyway, so I fought very hard and lost against that militarized vehicle. Why? Because the more militarized we make our local police, once we shifted our police from peace officers, i.e. the guy who might have driven you home when you were drunk and had a beer when you were 16 and you weren't supposed to, to people who have ramrods and want to tear gas you in your home. Um, the problem also, of course, is that we know with a lot of these police actions, especially no-knock raids, you end up hitting the wrong house. So there's a high risk of things going horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, and also one must beg the question, why does our government think that we are all uh, bad guys who have to be hurt. It's, it's, there's a flaw in the entire model of how we are organizing society at this stage. So, these militarized uh, vehicles have led to more militarization. So, non-lethal weapons. So, one of the things that non-lethal weapons are things like tasers. There's a great documentary, actually I might talk about this on another show, um, that talks about how non-lethal these tasers actually are. It turns out not as non-lethal as one would think, not only because sometimes, because for some obscure reason, they decided to make it um, look like a gun. So you will see various reports come out where officers accidentally deployed their taser, but they used their gun and they shot and killed someone. So those are the oopsies that just happened. But tasers actually give a lot of people uh, heart attacks. And so they kill them, but they get away with it because they say it's non-lethal or they, you can't show the correlation between the heart attack and the deployment of the taser. But here's the crux for that super long lead in. Turns out the other non-lethal weaponry that uh, the powers that be that your delightful overlords have been working on are heat ray weapons and the voice of God. So what is the voice of God? The voice of God is a sonic tool. So it's an auditory uh, device. It's called an LRAD. And uh, that basically, like, it gives you tinnitus, it makes you dizzy, you get a bit of vertigo, um, but it's a non-lethal weapon that is now possibly being deployed against peaceful protesters. Um, across the world, and I'll get into some more details about that in a second. The heat ray weapons are uh, also called ADS. ADS stands for Active Denial System. So this is actually a microwave weapon, a heat ray weapon, that will make you feel like, uh, like you've been blasted by a really hot oven and that you've got to move away, right? And so I will show you some footage 
where you can see how people um, actually react when, when, when it's deployed against them. And if I can find the video, I will also show you one where they do it to, to some birds. All right, but first, here's what I wanna talk about. So the US military's heat weapon is real and painful, and here's what it does. So this is from 2020. And uh, earlier this week, an NPR report uncovered an exchange from June 1st in which a military police officer wanted to know if the DC National Guard owned a pain-inducing heat weapon for potentially using against protesters. He also asked about a powerful auditory communication system that has been compared to the voice of God. Now, I personally think that, you know, God is hopefully uh, more kind and, and generous <laughs> than this weapon sounds like it is. Um, so the weapon, an active denial system, ADS, is a real thing, as is the sound system, which is called a long-range acoustic device. All right, so Carla, why are you on about this stuff? Let me tell you why. It looks like they used the microwave, the heat wave system, against protesters in Australia. Now, let me remind you, you think things are bad in Canada, which is super disappointing because, you know, that is actually right, our neighbors right over there. Uh, things are way worse in Australia. Australia has been locked down for two years. They've lost their minds. They're building vaccination camps. Uh, it's very, very Orwellian. They, amongst other things, called their camp. And this is a camp where they are... Uh, claiming to quarantine people, but where they are also putting people whose speech they do not like. One of those camps is called a wellness camp. So anyway, in Canberra last week, a bunch of protesters were out letting their government know, as you're allowed to do, these rights, your right to free speech doesn't come from your government. It comes from you. You have a natural right to speak your mind and don't let anyone tell you that's not the case. Now you wanna think about what you're saying because you know, hateful speech is kind of gross and you wanna be better than that, but it, there isn't such a thing as hate speech. And I know that's a radical notion at this stage based on the indoctrination people are getting in colleges. There is hateful speech and you should know when someone is a hateful, gross person so that you can judge them accordingly. It doesn't help silencing people. So out in Australia, people were protesting against the lockdowns, against the ridiculous totalitarian, biofascist totalitarian regime that they're trying to build. And they, looks like they actually nuked them. So here is a clip from, um, from a senator, and uh, he, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. Let me see if I can get this to work right here. Um, all right, and I'm gonna make it big, and hopefully this is gonna work, and we're gonna try and edit in over here, and we will see. All right, acoustic devices at Parliament House on Saturday. That would be something that, uh, is our police methodology, which we would have to look at some sort of public interest immunity claim, Senator? Is there any surely we, public interest to to know whether or not they're there without delving too much? I'd have to. I'd have to. If I could take that on notice, I'd have to get advice. Okay, I'd be happy. I understand. I'd be happy for that. Um, and also, if you could tell us what type they were, please. Sure. Um, and can you confirm whether or not they were used at any point? Thank you very much, and thank you, Chief. Well, thank you very much, Senator. All right, so that was literally um, a minister in Australia asking the police chief of Canberra if they used a heat ray weapon against people at a peaceful protest, and he says, I'm not going to tell you because that's police protocol. Now, if that sounds like a big punt, it is a big punt. It is a trend we have seen even here in New Hampshire where when there are uh, 
issues with the police. They will say it's it's an internal investigation matter. They'll say it's police protocol and we can't tell you what the rules are. They will literally not tell us what's going on. Now, do you know how you sow distrust in life? You sow distrust by distrusting people and treating us like we're the enemy. So they did actually use um, they did actually use these these uh, weapons. These are weapons, even though they're non-lethal. So they're just basically saying, we'll hurt you, uh, but we won't kill you. Now, I mean, I guess that's nicer than a hundred years ago, but I say we can do better. So back to this article, right? So, um, so back in America now, so, so we know for a fact that uh, they're thinking about using these possibly in Canada. We know that they have been deployed or been at least on site in Australia. I did see various Twitter feeds and I will embed this on my, uh, on my website, carlagarrick.com, where you should subscribe and follow along. Um, I will embed all this information so you can go and you can check it for yourself. But now back in America, so, um, so, so the NPR asks, you know, does the National Guard have these weapons? And someone says, I responded that the DC National Guard was not in possession of either LRADs or ADSs. So the sound or the heat ray one. So the fact that a controversial weapon was floated as a possible means of dealing with what the Washington Post described as peaceful protesters has sparked outrage with the AL, uh, ACLU. It's nice of them to step up. So this was a couple of years ago. I mean, I guess now they're like down with mandates, so who knows? But they did say back then, so this is in September 2020, the ACLU said, reminder, our government shouldn't be conspiring to use heat rays against us for exercising our constitutional rights. So yay, I agree with, um, with the ACLU on that. Now back to sort of the notion of the tinfoil hats. So it turns out the tinfoil hat thing comes from these microwave ray weapons, right? So it was basically when they started developing these weapons, it was obviously hush hush. And so rumors would come out, like, you know, how we learn things over time. And so uh, it does turn out that aluminum foil, tin foil, will block a lot of these microwave weapons. And so I guess that's sort of where the original notion was, hey, uh, you could protect yourself. Uh, either from them, you know, doing little rays on your noggin, um, but also it can actually stop it. So who knows? I'm not going to predict that we are literally going to have um, people in, in tinfoil suits out there soon, but, uh, but I would not be surprised. The point of all of this is we, we're, we're heading down a really dark path and I really want to caution people. Um, I think part of the problem of what we're seeing in the world is actually the following. Um, I saw a great uh, C.S. Lewis, so uh, um, Alice in Wonderland. I saw a great quote from him today that I kind of want to share with you as, as we start to wrap down here. And so it says, my contention is that good men, not bad men, consistently acting upon that position, imposing the good, would act as cruelly and unjustly as the greatest tyrants. They might, in some respects, act even worse. And this one, guys, is for you Karens out there. If you're telling other people to mask up, you're part of the problem. All attorneys, of all attorneys, 
a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It's do-gooders, it's people who are trying to do the right thing, who are now causing these problems. It's safetyism. It would be better to live under a robin baron than under omnipotent moral busybodies. The robber barons cruelly may sometimes sleep, his cupidity may at some point be satiated, but those who torment us for their own good will torment us without end, for they do so with the approval of their own conscience. They may be more likely to go to heaven, yet at the same time likely to make hell of earth. This very kindness stings with intolerable insult. So, to be cured against one's will and cured of states for which we may not regard as disease is to put on the level of those who have not yet reached the age of reason or those who never will. So my point is, stop being a goody two-shoes and stop telling other people what to do with our lives. Your job is to take care of you is to once you've like figured out your your stuff if you're not healthy get healthy you can't fake health you can't fake skills and you can't fake community all right in the last few minutes i do want to talk just briefly about this documentary downfall a case against boeing um this movie just came out it's an hour and 20 minutes it's a good documentary it covers the there were two Boeing crashes that sort of happened within five months of each other. And so it kind of tells you the history of that. Uh, they both happened overseas. I'm not sure they were that covered in the media here. But um, basically, turns out uh, Boeing was doing super shady stuff. They were hiding uh, safety information and kind of things, changes they'd made to their airplane design. They were doing that because they were trying to, one, make a profit, which on the face of it is not a problem, but two, also because they were trying to comply with the FAA's safetyism. So the more regulations we create, the more you create expenses that people have to meet. But now you'll say, but Carla, the regulations protect us, but do they? So here's my argument. Here's what I think happens. The second you start to write laws down, you're telling people up until that point, you can do something, and then this is the line. But a lot of times when you're negotiating where that line is, you're putting it as far away as possible. So what you've done is you've actually shifted what people might rationally and responsibly do from a moral perspective to down the line to some kind of regulatory thing. Now, what do I mean by that? I think we're creating a system by, by writing too many laws down, we're actually corrupting people's innate morality. So there's this there's this beautiful meme, uh, and maybe I'll be able to bring it up on screen for you guys later. If you're not following my Instagram, uh, it's on fire, and everyone should be on my Insta. It's Carla Garrick um, on Instagram. I mostly post memes. I think one day I'm going to use it simply as my, uh, I'm going to plead the fifth and use it as my defense. Um, but on there, there's this photo it's a black and white photo and it's a young girl and it's a police officer he's kind of dressed in full swat he's clearly at a protest you can't really tell which country it is but you you have this child she's a little shorter you have the the police officer and they're standing like this and then underneath them they have the words morality and obedience and morality is doing what's right regardless of what you're told. So instead of the government telling you where that line is, you have to figure it out for yourself. Obedience is doing what you're told regardless of what's right. And sadly, folks, that's where we are now. We are living in a world where people are once again just following orders 
and stop just stop stop and think what is right and honestly the only thing that can be right is to decide for yourself am i as a unit doing everything possible to keep myself healthy, keep myself in balance, really have a sense of self. What do I mean by that? I mean that you are um, in balance between your, your body and your mind. When your body and your mind are in harmony, you have a sense of self. And that is where we need to start. Start. Stop worrying about what other people are doing. Worry about what you're doing. Get your house in order. Once your house is in order, you extend that to one other person. Uh, if you want to be a busy buddy, there are homeless people who need help. Personally, there are junkies that need help, drug addicts. Go help a person because it all boils down to individualism, real people, dealing with real problems. So that's what I got for episode 14 of the Carla Garrick Show. Once again, it was kind of a wild ride. Um, I will keep getting better. I'm hopeful that I can edit some of this stuff in and I am thrilled that I could be here and share my thoughts with you. I look forward to seeing you again next week. In the meanwhile, follow along on social. I'm on Insta, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. And um, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to email me at Carla at Thanks, guys. Peace out.